Good afternoon, one and all, from the Second Age of Reason. How are you all doing? We're here to talk about the incident. The incident in Colorado. Now, my sympathies go out to the victims and their families. There will always be victims, and you never know. But, I just want to bring a few items to the discussion. And I'm sure many of people have already voiced these same concerns. So, I think I'd like to go over these with you for a minute. So please bear with me. There was this incident in Colorado. A gunman in a theater. Many victims. And so, the person is in custody. Now, I have to remind you, as the devil's advocate, this is America. And at least for the longest time, it has been innocent until proven guilty. Now, maybe it's a simple lone wolf, open and shut case. And all the surveillance videos, inside and outside the building, will bear this out. That will make it simple, and justice to be meted out. But I thought I would just mention, as a pure case of logic, either he did it, or he didn't do it. Now, if he did it, then we have to say, did he plan it? Was he on drugs? Did he administer the drugs himself because he wanted to? Or did somebody else give him the drugs? He looks drugged to me when I've seen him in his bizarre red hair. So I thought, well, there are drugs like devil's breath that they can make people extremely suggestible. But are they competent, coherent enough to do things? I don't know. So, there's a question. Did he do it? Yes or no? Another question was, at one point they had said there may have been two gunmen, multiple gunmen, which means maybe it was not a lone wolf. Maybe it was um, a planned thing. Maybe there's a kingpin, a mastermind behind it all. It seems a little bit like this summer is the Arms Trade Treaty, which the United Nations is having and trying to organize it so that people weapons will not be able to supposedly trade, but another goal is to disarm the people. And thus, go after the American Second Amendment. So, this all begs the question, because I mean, the Second Amendment was put there because of evil and corrupt government. And they just wanted everybody in America to be awake and aware and ready for whatever would come. And to take that away from them leaves the population, the entire population, as victims. And I'll remind you that in the theater, all the victims would have been in compliance with a gun-free environment. The gunman was would not have been. And then the question is, would the gunman have been able to be armed and shielded and everything else in the gun-free environment? Or would he have been able to get them, probably illegally, anyway? So, gun control isn't necessarily the answer. The person was an unemployed student, so questions are, where did he get his money for all these weapons and shields and how he 
break his apartment and everything else. It doesn't make sense. Why did a person who's from San Diego, living in Aurora, Colorado, have a car with plates from Tennessee? Whose plates were they? How did he get the money? Were things bought on a charge card? Were things bought with cash or check? Purchase order? It's just things that probably need to be searched out. Because you can throw the book at him and mete out justice. And you would think you have the bad man. But if he didn't do it, if he's just a patsy, or if he's an accomplice in a group, they'll punish him. But the mastermind and others will be still free to do whatever it is they do. So I thought I'd mention that. Also, is the mysterious case of his notebook that he had sent. And if somebody had read the notebook, as it was intended, they would have known about the plan. The diagrams in the notebook laid it out with all the gunmen. So that's peculiar. So that probably needs to be looked into a little bit. Also, is all that stuff that, you know, the armaments and the body armor takes time to put on. Did he put that on in front of everybody? Or did he just walk in, walk out of the theater as himself, change outside, and then come on in again? Because if they saw him suit up in the theater in front of everybody, then of course you know who he is. But if he went out and then came back in, it could have been another gunman. If he had a helmet on and a visor, how would you know? So I just thought I'd mention that. And perhaps there was a getaway car. Maybe there'd be three people. Two gunmen and a getaway car. And the instructions were, you have to be outside by this time, plus or minus five seconds, and if you're not, you're on your own. The secretary will disavow any knowledge of your actions. Something like that. So, you knew there was not... The plan was brilliant, and it, it just falls apart when you get to the end game part of it. Because it didn't erupt, erupt into a gunfight where he goes out in a blaze of glory and the question dies forever. And he didn't couldn't really run home to his apartment because it was rigged up that way. And he didn't really take off to run to be in some faraway place. So what is the goal? Just thinking. It seems to be a redo. Well, maybe it's a redo of the Fast and Furious to make it seem as though guns are so bad. But the plan blew up in Mexico. And there's egg in their faces. Is he from the same sort of thing? To discredit the Second Amendment and move forward? Or is it even something more lucrative? Such as showing the need for TSA at shopping malls, bus stations, train stations, theaters, all over the place. Very lucrative indeed. It's a high price to pay for that. Does he think he's going to be rescued or acquitted? I don't know. These are all things to consider. But I don't... I think we want to find out. Pick his brains to the max and learn out if he had a handler, if he had a mentor, and if he had been given reasons, real or bogus, for what he did. Just saying, because things don't add up entirely. Somebody with his income buying that much stuff, where did the money come from? Where did the credit come from? Who is approving it? 
the logistics of it all. So, oh, and then it was also the case of his family and him having connections with DARPA. Well, his specialty was neurology, but there was other things like with bionics and making super soldiers. And so maybe, I don't know, maybe he had some psychotic episode and went bonkers, and maybe he was part of the experiment himself. Maybe he sniffed a little too much devil's breath and it went to his head. I don't know. But I think there's a lot of questions here that need to be answered. Well, anyway, enough of this for now. Just thought I'd put them out there while I had them. And until later, we'll be seeing you.